Okay, so I'm going to show a basic setup from download to um, tasks setup. And I'm not going to show the actual downloading process because it's going to vary um, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac or Linux. So um, basically do whatever you need to do to download this file from obsidian.md um, and then install it using the installer that downloads and get it up and running. And you should have something that looks like this. So this is what it looks like when you first start it. Um, you have a few options here. You can create a new vault, which is what we're going to do. You can open an existing folder if you have one already for some reason. Um, you can set up Obsidian Sync, which is a paid service. If And this is what you want to do if you already have a vault somewhere else. But if you're watching this, you probably don't. So. Um, we're just going to do create, and all it is is it's a folder on your computer somewhere that contains the a bunch of um, basically souped up text files. They're called Markdown, which is why it has the .md extension there, um, and it's a very simple way of adding formatting through a plain text file. You don't need to worry too much about that, but um, you can create a folder, call it whatever you want. You can call it Obsidian. You can call it second brain. Mine is called second brain. Um, you can call it, you know, notes of glory, whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to call it obsidian demo. Always misspell obsidian. Um, okay. And then you have to pick where you're going to put it. I recommend putting it anywhere that you have um, regular backups happening. So for me, that would be like um, in my documents, something like that. Um, and then it will basically, you don't need to create the folder for it. It will create a folder called whatever you named it in the location that you picked. Um, but yeah, you want it somewhere that it will get backed up when you do backups so that you don't lose it if something goes wrong. So this is what it looks like to start with. You basically just have this, you can create a bunch of subfolders and I do create subfolders, um, as I described in the blog post for a number of things like templates um and daily notes and that kind of stuff um but a lot of what you want to set up is going to be in this settings area so there's nick uh milo milo his videos are much better for going over like all of the stuff about obsidian i just want to show like how to get this up and running promptly so when you go to community plugins um it's going to warn you that basically um there's potential for community plugins to to harm your computer although they try um to prevent that um i'm comfortable turning it on and using well-known ones um so then you'll go to browse and search for tasks and then install and then i feel like this came up when we were talking about it yesterday, but um, I feel like I had to do some stuff to make it work. Okay, so part of it is enable and then options. It does say changing any settings requires a restart. Um, I don't know how serious they are about all of that. Most of the settings <clears throat> you probably want to customize when you do it um, after a while, but to start with, most of them are pretty good the way they are. I like to add um, this this one right here, this this task filter, it depends on how you're going to use your notes, and you can obviously change it if you decide that something makes more sense once you have more experience with it. But it's um, if you do it with a, a tag, it'll only count things as tasks if they have that tag or that piece of, piece of text. If you don't do it with a tag. Um, then it will count anything that's in like a to-do list, checklist item. Um, I'm gonna leave it on the default to show this, but you definitely, if you find that you have different kinds of things, like you might be making a checklist for like a, a process or something, and you don't necessarily wanna make that a task with like a due date or anything, you just wanna have it separate, then you can use this to, to separate it out. Um, you'll notice there's a lot of see the documentation, and the documentation is here um, it's probably easiest to follow the link rather than type this in um, 
and it has a ton of features. So um, I find it really helpful to like reference this for the queries and stuff like that. But if you're gonna nerd out on it, it does require some actual nerding. Um, but I'm gonna leave it mostly with its default stuff for right now and see what happens. I'm gonna create a new note. Um, and this might be a topic note, right? So I might create um, a books note or whatever. I, I would not actually store my books in here because um, I get super nerdy and do them in Goodreads and filter them and all sorts of stuff. But um, say I want to create um, uh, like a goal of reading a certain number of pages. Then I think, and this is uh, this is why it's going to be an off-the-cuff video. I don't remember what the default shortcut is for setting up a task. I use Command T, but that's clearly not how it is set up by default. I've customized my hotkeys quite a lot, so let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, so there's this one. It's going to freak out if I tell it to do. Command T because that's already a thing. But um, let's see. So since it says it's not going to work because of new tab, I'm going to go to new tab. I'm going to search for new tab to find that. And honestly, I don't really use the new tab thing all that often. I usually just create a new note and don't do a ton with tabs. But um, I can see why that's the default though, because that is what it is in like browsers and stuff. Okay, so anyways, I changed it, so it's Command T. Um, you can also use the Command Palette um, to create it. So, and a nice thing about the Command Palette is if it has a shortcut, it'll show you. So um, I tend to use shortcuts a lot. And if you just want to create a task and not add any details, all you have to do is pull this up and like hit enter. And it turns it into a checkbox. You don't have to set up the checkbox in advance. Um, you can just use any line of text uh, and and hit that command T and then it will do that. It also has these um, suggestions of things you might want to do. I sometimes use them. It took me a while to figure out I can also, um, if I start typing something, like I use scheduled date a lot, I can actually filter down that list. Um, you can set it up, you can change it in the options to decide um, whether it whether it makes these suggestions at all, if you find them annoying or they get in your way or you prefer to use the the graphical interface rather than typing, um, you can disable it entirely. You can also set it up so that it will only try and make suggestions once you've written a certain number of characters. So I could have it so that, it, you know, I had to write SCH and then it would suggest this, but it wouldn't be in my way until then. Um, I think when you're starting out, it's probably easiest to just do it through this interface so you can sort of see how uh, the options work. You can do things like it. I mean, it has suggestions here about, you know, you can do like uh, TD and then space and it will fill it in with today. Um, it tries to be smart, but definitely make sure that these dates are the way you want them set up. Um, and then you can do recurrence. So if I want to read uh, a book, a portion of a book every day and I want to make that a task, then I could start it as scheduled for today. There's different, these are sort of arbitrary. You can decide what makes sense for you. I tend to use scheduled rather than do because I um, do has like a stronger weight when it's doing sorting that I don't necessarily like when I'm mixing my, my work and personal tasks. But um, I recommend just picking something, trying it, you'll figure out what doesn't suit you and you'll change it and it's not a big deal. Um, this start date can also be used to keep things from showing up that you can't start early. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with that. And then um, let's create a new note called task overview or something like that. And this is where you actually set up, um, you, can, you can do things, I mean, if you want, all you have to do is make these and you don't have to do any kind of like turning it into a, a central list or whatever. But I think the real power comes from once you have your uh, your setup, it will pick it up from anywhere that you um, 
that you have these tasks. So I'm trying to remember, I think it's tasks. Um, <laughs> I should probably have reviewed this um, before I started making a video about it, but we'll just try that and see what happens. Okay, well that, that worked pretty well right off. Um, so basically it, there's all these different options and this is where I do reference these quite a lot is um, your filters, like what gets shown and what doesn't get shown, um, how they're sorted. So when I do for my, for my real Obsidian Vault, um, I have a couple of sections, like I have, um, I have it, I have it grouped by which folder they're in. So the, the path is what that's called. Um, so basically some of my tasks are in a work and clients folder, um, and I group those ones together and then I group everything else together so that I can separate out what's work, what's personal. So when I'm not working, I don't, I don't really look at the work one at all. Um, you can also filter those, right? So if you wanted to make like a, a work tasks, you can, you can basically, um, filter it there, right? By folder. So you can do this with any kind of thing. You know, if you wanted to group things, um, setting them up in different folders can give you options for, uh, for filtering, for sorting, for grouping, all kinds of stuff later on. There's all sorts of ways to do it. I sometimes use things like, um, tags. If I have a tag for something that's really routine and I don't want it to show up, in certain lists because it's just clutter there. Um, but I do want to track that it's being done. You know, I might filter out, I might give it a specific route. Like I have a, a routine tag and I might assign that tag to it. Um, and then it will be able to be filtered out. Um, because I've set this task up as recurring, once I check it off, it will then put the next one automatically with tomorrow's date. Um, and so that's kind of a very quick, like how I just set up the tasks to start with. Um, I might make more videos later about how I set up, um, all the other things, the daily notes, um, there's a neat calendar plugin that shows up. Um, there's all kinds of very cool stuff that this will do, but I'm going to try and limit it to one topic per video for right now. So hopefully this is helpful.